When a company's profit goes up or down from one period to the next, we can use cause of change analysis to understand why that happened. For example, Home Depot's net income increased significantly from 2017 to 2018. So if we take a look, their net income in 2017 was $8.63 billion, and it went up in 2018 to over $11 billion. So there was an increase of $2.5 billion of profit from one year to the next. And the question is, why? Did they sell more product? Did they bring down one of their expenses? What happened? So we're going to use cause of change analysis. I'm going to walk you through this. There's a lot of moving parts, but I think you'll find it very helpful. So we're going to start with our base year here, fiscal year 2017. And then in each column here, in each column, we're going to make an additional change and see what was the effect, for example, of the increase in weekly sales on the company's profit. So fiscal year 2017, they had 100.904 uh, billion dollars in profit. See that? So I just got that from the income statement. Now I'm going to convert that to weekly sales, right? Right here. What am I going to do? So this 1.94 billion, you take a look, that's simply just the 100.904 billion of sales for the whole year and divide it by 52 for 52 weeks, right? So we've got 1.94 billion of sales times 52 weeks, 100.904 uh, billion in sales. They had a 14.5% operating margin. Okay, so that yielded an operating profit of this, 14.681 billion. Then there were some non-operating. This is our non-operating expenses right here. Okay, and that gets us to our earnings before taxes. Then we multiply that by one minus the effective tax rate. That gave us the net income. This is all, th this information right here is just from that 2017 income statement. Okay, that's our base we're going to start with 2017, then we're going to look at how different things like growth and weekly sales had an effect and increased or decreased what the profit would be in 2018. So now that we got this, we're going to make one change in this column, and then we'll hold everything constant, make one change in this column, and so forth. So in this first column, you're going to see why I got the weekly sales, because you don't normally say that in an income statement. You'd be like, why did you convert to weekly sales? So in basically in 2018, the weekly sales right here, okay, so this weekly sales in 2018, it was not 1.94 billion. It was over 2 billion. Well, how did I get that? Why, why was it different? Because there was 53 weeks in the fiscal year 2018 for Home Depot. I'll explain why in a second. But first, we're going to take the 2018 total sales and divide it by 53. That is how I got this figure of 2.042 billion. And then we're going to multiply that by 52 weeks in the year. Okay. And then that's going to give us the sales. Okay. Now you're wondering, what are you doing? Why are you dividing? Why did you divide uh, this by 53? Because over here we divided by 52. We divided 100.904 by 52 to get this. Why are we now dividing this? by why are we dividing that by uh, 53 to get the weekly sales and i'll show you you go to uh, home depot's 10k for that year our fiscal year is a 50 see that see this here our fiscal year is a 52 or 53 week period ending on the sunday nearest to january 31st so some retailers have something like this where you know they say okay our fiscal year end will always end on the you know the last sunday in january or something like that Okay, and so that means that occasionally, occasionally there will be a fiscal year that has 53 weeks in it instead of 52. So that's why. So so basically 2018 was a 53 week fiscal year, whereas 2017 was a 52 week fiscal year. That's why when I get the the weekly sales for 2017, I divide this by 52. And when I got the weekly sales for 2018, I took this here. And divided by 53. So what we want to get is an apples to apples comparison. And the weekly sales in 2017 was 1.94 billion. Weekly sales in 2018 was 2.042 billion. And what we want to do, everything else here is the same. Okay, this this is different because it's this times 52. Uh, but the margin is the same. The non-operating expenses here, right? They're they're held constant. The effective uh, one minus the effective tax rate, everything is the same except, except we see that the weekly sales was higher in 2018 than it was in 2017, and we want to see what was the effect on the company's profit. 
So with the operating margin constant, non-operating expenses, con everything constant, the effect of the change was $482 million. What does that mean? Let me translate. They sold more, pro they had more sales per week in 2018 than they did in 2017. And because they had more sales per week in 2018, that resulted in $482 million of profit beyond what they had in 2017. Okay? So, we're going to go, the summary of the facts, I think you'll find this, this useful here. So, we're going to start, we've got the $8.6 billion, that's the same as this here. Okay, this and this are the same. It's what we start. That's what we had in 2017. And then because of the, they had higher weekly sales in 2018, that led to an additional $482 million in profit. Okay. Now that's not, you, if you add that together, you say, well, you were at $9.112 billion, and they ultimately ended up at a, over $11 billion. So the weekly sales was not the only thing that happened. It's just I'm going one thing at a time. That is the effect. So they went up $2.5 billion of profit. From 2017 to 2018, profit was two two and a half billion higher in 2018. 482 million of that was because they sold more product on a weekly basis, right? They were selling more uh, other products at the Home Depot stores. Now, as we already mentioned, there was 53 weeks. Okay, there were 53 weeks in the fiscal year for 20 2018. So because there was an additional week, you would expect there's there's going to be more sales, right? Because there was an additional fiscal week there. So in this column right here, all we're we, we keep the weekly sales from last column the same now. OK, now this does not change. And now we change this. We just say, OK, now there's 53 weeks instead of 52. OK, so that gets us to this the total sales. Margin is the same. We don't change the margin. We don't change the non-operating expenses. We don't change one minus the effective tax rate. Now, when we do all that, we see that. Because of the 53rd, that extra week, that led to an additional $187 million in profit uh, beyond what they had in 2017. So I will add that. So you'll see that here and now here. So now, breaking it down, in 2017, they did $8.63 billion of profit. But then in 2018, they had more profit than eight point. They had $11 billion something. And $482 million of that was because they sold more product each week. And 187 million of the profit boost was because they had that 53rd week. They had an extra week in the fiscal year. Okay. Now, next, we're going to go to the operating margin. Now, we keep this the same, the weekly sales. Now we keep the 53 weeks the same because we're going to keep everything the same as the prior column, except we change one thing. And the one thing we change is that in 2018, the pro operating margin was 14.4%. Instead of what in 2017 it had been 14.5 percent, so the operating margin declined. Okay, the operating margin declined, and, and now we keep the non-operating expenses constant, one minus the tax rate constant, and we see that the hypothetical net. If the if these were the only th this number here, th this number like these. If you're wondering what these numbers are, like this 9.156 billion, or uh, 9.165 billion, excuse me. That is like what the hypothetical profit would have been if we just had these these changes. Okay, now we see that that was 134 million lower profit in 2018 than 2017 because of the change in the margin. All right, let me go back just to make sure. I just really want to be clear here. So in 2017, 8.63 billion of profit, but if we go, they sell more product every week in 2018. So that 482 plus this equals this here, the 9.112. Now, we had an extra week of sales that led to an extra 187 million. How do I get 187 million? Is the difference of these two numbers here, okay? Then we say, okay, well, the difference, this actually decreased. So this would have been the hypothetical profit now with this change in operating margin factored in. The difference between these two numbers there's a decline of 134, okay? That's where I'm getting this. I, I hope this is all making sense to you, okay? If, if not, go back and rewatch the video from the beginning, maybe the second time around. What I'm doing is each case, I'm changing one thing, and this time what we changed was the margin, okay? Here, in this column, we changed the weekly sales, and then in this column, we changed the number of weeks in the fiscal year. 
here we're changing the operating margin okay to what the actual 2018 operating margin was it was 14.4 percent so that cost basically one tenth of one percentage point cost them 134 million dollars of profit like in other words if they had had the same operating margin in 2018 if it had been 14.5 percent like it was in 2017 then that would have added 100 basically they wouldn't have lost 134 million of profit okay now we're going to go to the change in the interest expense okay we see here now we've got this interest net and other expenses now that wasn't much of a change it was just about nine million dollars there okay so now we see that the you know you know after factoring in uh the the tax rate and so forth we end up with just a six dollar change after tax so that's not much of an effect so we're here okay here we got so far we've covered everything except one thing okay which was there was a lower effective tax rate in 2018 so now in 2018 the effect so again we're going to have everything here these are all the same as this so look at all those numbers right there they're all identical what is different is now in the final column we change the effective tax rate one minus the effective tax rate so what happens is now we get to the, this final number here because now we've made all the adjustments that is the net income the actual net income for 2018 and then this was the actual net income for 2017 so, okay now we see the difference between these two numbers is 1.95 billion this number right here okay that's the difference between those two numbers and that now let's bring that down here's the 1.95 billion let's tie this all together 8.63 billion of profit in 2017 11.121 billion of profit in 2018 now you say that's awesome they went from 8.6 billion of profit to over 11 billion two and a half billion dollar increase in profit wow i guess the dome depot has had a phenomenal year they did do well they increased their weekly sales that led to almost 500 million of extra profit okay but 187 million of the profit boost was due to just having an extra f a week in the fiscal year okay their margin actually went down they cost them some money the effective tax rate went down right and if we go specifically here it is it went from 37 percent to 23.6 percent to be precise because of the tax cuts and jobs act in the u.s okay that decreased the corporate income tax rate for companies in the u.s so that is responsible for almost two billion dollars here okay of that two and a half billion dollar increase in profit in other words we see that look yeah the company did better they increased their weekly sales and that led to an extra 500 million dollars almost a profit but some of the extra profit they got was from having an extra year in the fiscal year but really the main driver okay the main driver is right here that 1.95 billion of extra profit just due to the tax rate coming down for the corporate income tax rate in the u.s now that doesn't mean home depot is doing a poor job doing running their company or anything like that they're doing a good job but out of a two and a half billion dollar increase in profit almost two billion of it had to do with something that was really beyond home depot's control the tax rates came down okay and that's great that's great i'm sure the shareholders are happy they're paying less tax and so forth it's not that this isn't a real thing or that it just doesn't affect cash flows for the company. It's a great thing for the company, but it's not something the company had any control over. Okay, so this is helpful. We did cause of change analysis. We understand how we went from here to here. Okay, two and a half billion dollar increase in profit, but almost two billion of it had to do with the tax rate coming down.